Hello everyone! So apparently, I was close to the ending last time, and to be honest, I just cannot wait to keep going. But a lot of things happen, and after almost a week, I'm back! I think? I lost track of how much time happened. But anyway, last time on the Greatest Attorney, we ended up uh, having to. We ended up proving that there was the need to uh, cross examine juror number four, which is actually Mistress, Mistress Carida, since she may have something to do after they had their marital dispute with her husband. Now she's ready to testify, frankly, quite scared. And to be honest, I was absolutely feeling bad for that woman. Uh, because she was actually shaking and terrified. But his husband is there out of nowhere, and I think it's time for them to actually give an explanation of everything that happened. To be quite honest, I'm pretty sure that I already know what is what actually happened. It's quite easy to figure out at this point. But I think it's time to face them and make them realize that they have to be more careful with the way they handle things. If that little uh, fight costed like I thought it did, then maybe they have to pay some time. But for now, I think it's as bad, since everything seems to have been accidental, at least according to my own point of view. Okay, now that we're here, not much things to do, but actually, continue. By the way, am I actually being here correctly? I think I should pull the microphone a bit towards me again. Oh boy, that's right. I actually don't like it going over here. No, actually it makes sense, I just remember what happened. Okay. No, I'm not, I'm not wanted to. Okay, so basically, out of nowhere he arrived in order to testify again, uh, along with her. I guess it's fine, because she definitely was absolutely terrified about what going Anyway, I'm gonna share my stuff. Why not? And... It's ready. The Battle of Caridad. Yes, on the date you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Knock a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. No had it out, thought, and got it wide open. What the what the window up? Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Plenty of snipes around our place. Can't say I'd notice if two, one or two went missing, I'm afraid. If that ball the thing in the victim's back really was one of ours. You'll have a job proving me until, I think. Hmm. It sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although, an entirely one-sided assault it's... The enemy caught us on the hop, sir. He ha had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. I was going to say maneuvers, which I think that it would have been better for me and from my point of view, but oh, whatever. Translator. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. Literally, the house was on fire. Of course, a veteran such as myself. It's only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just a gnat's whisker from a death at any moment. Are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well, we're... <clears throat> Hmm, what was the judge? Well, I must say I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows... In combat, one focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not be able to offer anything more than they have testified already. This may be a death end. And six may well be right. Well, whatever the chances, we only have this last examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Narugodo. Yes, I'm afraid so. 
Yeah, it was the last crystal examination. But I guess I was too tired to finish this. Very well, Council. Begin your cross examination. Here we go again. The Battle of Caridad. Yes, on the date you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Oh, that's right. I already said this, so I guess I just have to press it. The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Yes, that's right. If I remember correctly, it all started because of a note that was stuck into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Gary then. A rather passionate need, a rather passionate note, in fact. But Mr. Scaridep found the note discovering her husband's little secret. And she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it, too. What a sordid state of affairs. Hell on earth. Hmm. I say, what a chap says he can recall such things, it's common decency not to drag it at all up. And besides, half of it was quite off the mark anyway. A likely story! <laughs> she still says that! These waters run very deep. And what transpired next after this multiple explodes to the face? Knocked a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Who had it out of? And got the window open. And the fire also spread to some items of furniture, didn't it? The bookcase might answer anything of mine, really. Just so happens there was some bath water around that evening, so I slushed it up about to put it out. <laughs> a, most, a most precarious situation you put yourself in. Ours is a three story wing town. Um, ours is a three story townhouse on the west side of the street, where the main water main isn't connected yet. Have to draw water from a public water pump during the day if you need any, you see. The lodgers are always moaning that they can get any water at night. Also, that little mustache Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsume, you mean? Yes, he receives a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Can you imagine? Being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours is obviously very well off. Have you actually seen the state of the man? I believe he uses all of his incomes to buy books. Well, anyway, the point is, I was able to douse a fire with water, fortunately enough. Hmm. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Hold it! Even though the room was on fire? As far as I was concerned at the time, it was more important to extinguish my anger than the flame. When a woman wants to throw, she must throw! That is most certainly not true of Sasatate of Pasasatate, the Mr. <laughs> How did she know I was thinking that? <laughs> so, please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your house that day? Hmm. In all honesty, I don't recall, but I feel almost point out that I'm no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge, a napkin. Oh, he reacted. I'm gonna remember this. It was really only soft items that I was throwing. And I was really most restrained. The majority of them barely hit John. He is my husband, after all. I see, Mr. Garida. Your thoughtfulness and consideration for your spouse is... apparent. What about you, Mr. Garida? Do you remember what your wife threw at you? Well, I recall the lion's pride, of course. Jolly good book. Only just purchased it, too. And a jolly good book for burning, it seems. But it was touched awful sin of... But it was a touch awful sin on the battlefield, I can tell you. Flames everywhere, smoke bellowing. Couldn't see a bloody thing, really. Either say I wouldn't even have noticed a knife bouncing off the old bounce. 
I don't think they tend to bounce, actually. Well, it kind of depends on the speed. <laughs> plenty, plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I noticed one or two when missing the freight. Sorry, would you care to elaborate? Nothing to say, really. Rather partial for, to a spot of carving, you see. Pipes and whatnot, fish and taco. You know, this sort of thing. It's a passion we both share. I like to carve little wooden trinkets too, and then there's my little work. Sorry to say we're always losing knives about the place, and we have dozens of those things. They sell them at the market sometimes, 20 for the price of 19. Needless to say, I snap them off! John prefers to use two knives at mealtimes too instead of a knife and a fork. No, no, John. We don't want people thinking I'm some kind of sub. <laughs> Here we go again with the scaldings. Why are they being so evasive? I'm making it because they don't want to believe it. They can bear the thought that it might have been one of their knives that injured the victim. Which is entirely understandable, of course. But still. Go on with your testimony, witnesses. Sir! Ouch. <laughs> if that valley thing in the victim's bag really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it, I think. So you have no intention of admitting it was your knife? Unless we can produce proof? Carver knife. Mm -hmm. Even though there's no other credible possibility if Mr. Natsubi is innocent? Objection! You forget my Nipponese friend. That it has yet to be established that the accused is not responsible for the attack. As if I could forget. If there's, if only there was some way to know who had handled the knife. But I suppose we certainly like that is just a dream. I'm thinking fingerprints, but they are in the. Oh God, they're in the Meiji area. Perhaps you're thinking of fingerprinting, Mister Naruto. What? They know it? What? You mean? You mean it's not a dream? That sort of wizardry really exists? Whenever people touch anything, they leave behind a unique pattern for their, from their skin, or so they say. But I can't see anything. There are already countries in the world where these so-called fingerprints can be used as evidence. Lord Strongheart is currently discussing the matter at the Ministry of Justice. Yes, I believe we are rapidly approaching an era of scientific methods of investigation. Also, they still don't have fingerprints, but they know of them. But for now, we shall have to find an alternative method of proving our assertion. That this knife is found in the victim's bag. That this knife found in the victim's bag was originally in Mr. and Mistress Gary Depp's house. Ugh, if only I could transplant this whole incident to several years in the future. Oh, ho oh. <laughs> Funny you should say that. That's the sense of our testimony, is it? What do you think, Mr. Neruda? Well, I think we've heard all of this before, to be honest. I can't say I'm particularly confident that we'll be able to prove anything new from this testimony. But in this cross examination, it's absolutely essential that we establish how this knife came to be at the scene of the incident. Yes, I know. Hmm. I'm sure both of them must be feeling very worried. Worry that it was in fact a knife belonging to one of them that caused the victim's injury. If we could find even a tiny shred of evidence to support a theory, it would clinch this trial for us. It would explain everything. Yes, it would. So for Sasekisan's sake, we must. We must find that last crucial piece of evidence! I think it was on the third one. Okay, let's see. Uh, there it is. By Jupiter. By Jupiter? Is that what he say? Excuse me. Do you have something to add, sir? Mr. Gary Dev! Uh, oh, don't shoot! Uh, sorry! I beg your pardon? Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? 
Or nothing of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles, the whole thing launched in my direction, was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker, I seem to recall. Oh, the fire poker! Ouch! And the woman says she's some in some canny. She not in And the dirty is my father! Good grief, woman, we're not at home now. This is a court of law! Oh, dearie me! Ever so sorry, dear. <laughs> What's she even doing with a Tiffany here? Honestly, John, I would never have thrown such things at you, obviously. Well, take a look at this then. How do you suppose that happened, hmm? Your pipe, sir. But this thing in my hand, as usual, at the time of the onslaught, knock it clean out of. out. Knock it clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. Oh, when I went to pick up something up, it was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. I see, your pipe was broken. I would never have sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. Oh, you are one that sojourners, aren't you, dear? Hmm. I wonder what we should make of this account. The defense believes Mr. Caridab's mark just now to be of great significance. Objection! These war veterans' wars only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife, and pipes as well as hearts may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of, ed of adding to the formal testimony. Indeed. Common sense, one might say. Right, one? In that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Hmm? Well, I... I don't see why not. Oh, dearie me, there you go again! Try to integrate and greet yourself with a young lady! Oh my god! <laughs> Very well. The court will accept the gentleman's pipe up... The gentleman's pipe of evidence. The pipe has been entered into the car record. Let's see. I hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Naruhodo. Wow, she really has a lot of way too many matters. It looks to be in a sorry state with a bandage around it, doesn't it? For some reason it feels slightly ominous to me. Like it's trying to shout out a warning. Probably because it's the same blue as Mr. Gary Time's dressing gown. I suppose it must have considerable sentimental value to Mr. Gary Dev. Even that he's gone to the trouble of burning it like this. Either that or he can afford to replace it. Hmm. There's a small nick out of the ball here. Look, it appears to have been made re relatively recently. And see how there are little scraps and dents all over it? It's clearly a well loved pipe. Yes, you're right! It seems to me recently that being well loved goes hand in hand with getting some battle scars. This particular nick is catching my eye though. Because it's clearly new. <gasps> is that what I think it is? Oh, something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe here. Yes, I saw it. Something's stuck in here, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What's this? It's a tiny fragment metal. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? The tip of a blade? Surely it couldn't be. Fragment of metal. <sighs> I finally have the answer. Okay, I already scared this. This is a tiny piece of metal we found in the chamber of Mr. Gary Depp's pipe. It looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade? Is something wrong, Mr. Anuha? I, I don't really know. There's just something niggling me. But I can't put my finger on what it is. Perhaps in that case, it would be wise to examine some of the other pieces of evidence again. <laughs> my memory is still working. 
Here it is! I wonder if I could get something new. Oh, look here, Mr. Haruko, though! Just at the tip, a small piece of the plate appears to be missing. Wait, part of it's missing? It could be wrong, but I got the feeling... You remember this? Ah, that's... That's a tiny fragment of metal that we find inside Mr. Garrido's pipe. Yes, and just maybe... Oh my! It's a perfect fit! Somehow, I just knew it. There it is. I, I was just feeling rather disappointed for you that your request was turned out. Oh no, it's fine. Thanks to Susato-san, we have now some new evidence to work with. We should examine it carefully. It definitely worked after all. Well, thank you for that rebuttal, Mr. Gardev. Now, if we could return to the cross of the matter. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? Ugh. Burped. Hmm. Guess what? Objection! Objection! Mr. Garadev, could I ask you to take a good at uh, Could I ask you to take a good look at this, please? You can ask, but I can't see about the thing. You can't? You used to call me that I dead back in the regiment of the courts, but that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days. I struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q to be honest. So he has dyslexia. Oh, he does, dear me, it's rather weird in being asked about every other letter in every other word. You must be very dizzy. <laughs> Are you kidding me? What is that? A tiny scrap of metal. Yes, almost certainly from the tip of the blade. And what may appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadev's pipe. My pipe, you say? By job, I wonder how that got there. And what precisely does and, and what precisely does this fragment of metal in signify counsel? Are you suggesting that it is some in some way related to the matter of stabbing on Briar Road? I am! Oops. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the car record, I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of this case, my lord. Woo boy, here we go! Hmm. You you're appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, Council. Very well, then. Present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence? When paired with this fragment of metal, allegedly reveals the truth of this entire case. The knife itself! <laughs> this is a knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there's a small piece of the tip of the blade that is missing. A common issue with the inferior blades sold at unsevered street markets. Criminals who use them regularly leave the tips lodged in their victims' bones. And what of this particular knife? No doubt its tip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Objection! No! That's... <coughs> oh god. That's not the case! The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garrett's pipe! Uh, uh, good 
Hooray! Floor Bun Seeks! I don't believe it. The knife from the tram scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match. Good. Holy gosh! Order! 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 Is this some sort of Eastern sorcery? <clears throat> this is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. A miracle? Sylvan so Six has figured it out, has he? Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord! The crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Gardev's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. Have this thing in my hand as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles, she did, yes. It, why I it would never have been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. <laughs> oh, dearie me! <laughs> During the argument between these two, that occurred as just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mr. Gary the flung this knife at her husband. Oh, it's not complete. I wonder if it also updated my... No, it didn't. However, the knife miscarried it. Instead of striking the piping, he's got a time. Which caused the tip of the break off, of course. Good lord. Yes, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadev's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one. And yet there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. Ah. In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Garadev's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the track on the street below. Oh gosh, oh dear, oh no! Oh, she has a little box. Objection. I just realized that he's burning the backside. Break it, break it, break it, break it. A full body theory, I'll give you that. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausibly arranged to create an almost possible vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry? But after all, it is just a theory. The bottle I fear is cork. Because you see, a <laughs> leg! <laughs> it's spoiled by its unsurmount. It's spoiled by an unsurmountable inconsistency. An insurmountable? What? Lord Van Six, explain yourself. What is this inconsistency you claim to have identified? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with a knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... <gasps> <laughs> really? <laughs> in the middle of Cordon out of nowhere. That's right, you silly little man! No, John, old thing, what are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from a book. <laughs> Chicha, I wish you were watching this. There's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. <laughs> Yeah, he's burned to the backside. This is hilarious. Order, order! What right, you see? That's exactly right! If the knife had fallen on her from above, it would have struck her on the top of her head! Well, um... I mean, this is so easy. He's lost for words, look! I knew it! 
I never liked this theory in the first place. I don't know though. What really did happen? Hmm. It would appear that the Ferrets has made a rather spectacular blunder. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory, my learned friend, is history. We were so close! I could see the truth! I can see the... Naru, I can see the writing you. That's the same pose of despair. I was so sure I could wear on the right track! But now the way has been blocked completely by just one simple inconsistency! Or in other words, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Mr. Sato! You mustn't worry, Mr. Naruhoda. You were just caught off guard, that's all, and your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key to this is in the core record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. It seems you have nothing to say, my Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. A tacit acceptance to your theory is fatally flawed. Objection! Go, we go. He just said objection from that position? This inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong here. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test! Yes! If the knife fell on the victims from above, there's no way it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? So, there is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this consistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. Madness! Utter, utter madness! Surely, surely this must be the last time. Council, present the evidence of which you speak. This is the last inconsistency, the final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence, the evidence that explains how the falling piece became lodged in the victim's back is... The fourth book. This! The fourth book found on the scene! This is the final piece of evidence that... This is the final piece of evidence that the defense will present! Da, 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 da. Ba, da, ba, ba. The burnt book. You stop not Mr. Karitab's book. Yes, and to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene of the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question, and the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all now know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so, as, as part of his wholesome transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's true, however, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement at that point. But what made you place the book in the victim's hand? Oh well sir, that's because that's how I found it. When we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So, when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already picked up the book by the book on, on her own volition. And clearly that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd have much she had been doing much of anything. So the question becomes: why did the victim have that book in her hand? By Jingo! I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh dear me! We know that the book fell from the top of floor of the Garridev household onto the pavement below. At precisely the moment 
that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment, the young woman was walking along the street in the light fog, when all of a sudden, a book fell right in front of her. The book went through! Yes, Mr. Garidev, Mr. Garidev, and what do you think that woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Well, I, I really can't imagine it, but I, I suppose she might have reached down and pick up the book up. Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh! Oh heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick the fallen book up, what position would her back have been in? That's right! Facing the sky, completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book, there it is! I knew it was like that what happened. The next object fell from the room above. The jackknife is straight into the middle of her back. And at the same time, walking by chance directly behind Mrs. Green, was the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Well, I never! It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark on the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on, from her, on her from above. Oh! And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one, but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No! This was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfair to date accident! And that is the real truth behind this case! I want to take this picture, thank you! Well, Mr. and Mistress Garidev? The very first time you showed me that knife, I... I had my suspicions. I wonder if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old bean. But Mr. Skyridev... Of course. I never meant for anything of this sort to happen, but it was all my fault, wasn't it? Aww. I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw that book, and I threw the knife as well. John, dear. It's alright, I know. I'm so sorry. Truly. I'm sorry! The <laughs> god, sir. Your knee and everything. Wow, you love her so much. Oh, that was so freaking adorable! Lord Van Six, what news of Mistress Garda? She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events had left her in a specially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could easily have been a terrible tragedy. They shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. There is some good news, however, my, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor re believes she will regain consciousness soon. <sighs> it's a strange. We've been talking about the victim of last time, but we never once met her. How wonderful! The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that is good news. So, Mr. Soseki Natsume. <laughs> um, yes. On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to have 
to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture and have been repaid with unmeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. <laughs> no, it is me who should be begging your pardon. Oh no, Mr. Natsume. Not evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes. I jumped to the wrong conclusion again, in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing, didn't he? He thought she had been killed too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to life here. I, I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog, but they're haunting me. Poor Soseki-san. His imagination really has got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So when it happened, I thought the young woman had been taken by the, bug by the fox spirits. I should never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have called for help, uh, for a doctor, for the police! <sighs> Instead, I managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our, own, our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. Wow. One could ha indeed say that some of that sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were fooled be fooled by this spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lerman Six and our young lawyer here from the East, that chain has now been broken and the spirit exorcised. I heartily commend you both. Oh! Now then, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord! In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've been we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare that truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. Better than for the old bean, while she's out of action, you know, but I know what her decision would be. Does this mean I'll finally be able to get out of here and start work? Well, it's about time! Ace! I say, I'll have a corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Very well, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman! Not guilty! Not guilty! Not guilty! Not guilty! Oh, that's his voice. Not guilty. Not guilty. Oh, that guy's Irish! I would like a summation examination, my lord. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Soseki Natsume. I hereby pronounce you. Not guilty! That works. Here they are. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, Lord, sir. You are now a free one, man, once more. It's my hope that you will continue to further your education in British culture. And may you never again be brought before me. Oh, oh yes, sir. Of course. On my life, I swear I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I'm transported to this. <laughs> Thank you, counsels. Or to adjourn. Here it is. Finally. I guess I really needed an extra hour. Oh, welcome! Uh, wait, you mean me? Of course! Is there another welcome here? Is there even one? Compared to the original welcome student, Mr. Naruto the Squire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? 
What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, at last, I'm free! I'm free! Grateful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! <laughs> Heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I'm pleased, Mr. Natsumi is delighted! Would it be so hard to just to say that then? Marco, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman it was in no way your fault after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lovely, loyal, local lawyer! Um, yes? I mean, as I said before, I have just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see touring brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me, laughing. Look at the little hunchback. Oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. But today, you local lawyer gave my gloom the boat! You stopped firm behind that bar on all bench before all those babbling British! You battled to the bitter end, they buried a baffling through! And when I beheld a blending fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof I below, behold, the best barrister ever born! Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. I... I'm spitting. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. Oh, an anecdote? Is that what's to become of, of my hard work? Ah, there you are! Oh, there you are, my dear fellows. I knew it! I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. Oh, Mr. Shams, what pleasure to see you. I see I'm not... I'm here not a moment too soon. A disaster has been averted. I'm glad to see you. Oh! The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Neruhuto, and I wish you the very best of luck! <laughs> oh my... Dude. So much has happened in this trial that I got the time to go all the way to the end. Come on. Come on! It's just... finished. What? No! Then my haste was in vain! Ah! It's... it's you! Hey, Lux Shams! Oh, how come it, sir? Um, this is Mr. Natsume. The man you had arrested, Mr. Shams. Ah, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either of your black belongings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. Charming. This is all your fault, Herlock Jones. You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, aren't you not? Ah! Uh. <laughs> but she been taken to the hospital more urgently. I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh! <laughs> but it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are pretty human after all. Anyone would have been shaken by such an experience. I don't feel very badly about how I behaved. Well, never mind now, then. What was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? Um... Uh, nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, priceless! Oh, I'm sorry, really, but... <laughs> that was quite priceless. What's the second scene? <laughs> Still, on the bright side, you had an extremely entertaining experience with a pain a penny. And it would seem you were not you were not even found guilty. But there is no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? Even after this, I am hmm, I'm still cursed by the spirit and and now by the Reaper. Uh, Lord Van Six, I haven't forgotten you know what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed! It will be alright. It will be alright, Mr. Natsume. Hmm? If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble, 
I will protect you. Hiya! <laughs> really? <laughs> we are perfectly educated to set a takedown. Much as I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning me might be next time, Mr. Zeta. <laughs> so, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences and your friends back in Japan. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, I, I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh! It has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I've visited universities, libraries, workshops, I've been honored to with the dollars of professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here, and the city it has shaped. I've come to realize that it is calling my host, that it is my calling to sail home and tell my fellow countrymen about it. That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Or in perhaps less bill terms. You wish to withdraw halfway around the world. Escape the terror of the Reaper's Cursed. That's not at all! The more I learn of the territory, the more this strange feeling clocks in my insides. I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to paint a work of my own. Oh, I see. Work of literature by Suseki san. Could be an interesting read. And what about Mr. Seto and yourself, Mr. Naruhudu? Sorry, what about us? Would you return to Japan alongside your mustache compatriots? Why would we? A week has not just passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we have finally found our feet. And you're accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right, but we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've kept Kuderu Kalani for another 10 nights before our entire budget is exhausted. Well then, you could take my lodgings. Oh, uh, the windowsless room. Ah, but what it lacks in windows? It more than makes up for with a floor, ceiling, and walls. Great! <laughs> and of course, at the capital, leave behind the cursed evil spirit! Oh my, an evil spirit? <laughs> oh yes! Try to suffocate you while you sleep. It's. it's an infallible wake up call! We'll think about it if that's alright. It's a cat, isn't it? Perhaps I can offer a more welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? Really? Well, a vacancy has conveniently presented itself. Do it is up in the attic, I mean that. Are you sure it's, it isn't just a storage loft? I spoke with the landlady this very morning on the matter of price, and there is a clean their room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have knowledge. No luggage to speak of? Oh, this is simply wonderful! What an honor! To be invited by... <clears throat> to be invited to take a lodgings in the Great Detective's office is attic! I'm... so overcome for words! So, suggesting we look elsewhere is out then. Did it settled. I just will prepare a welcome home dinner this evening. And you must come too, Mr. Natsumi. I insist! I, 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 I don't know what to say, but thank you, and yes! Wonderful! Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Natsume. It shan't take luck. Somebody's happy? I mean, she's going to live with his hero. Loco, I, I knew that you wouldn't let me down. I'm truly delighted to have met you here in London. Likewise, Mr. Natsume. It's been a privilege, a privilege meeting you too. It's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon. Hmm. Well, I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But Loco, we'll meet again one day. Yes, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. I don't know when I meet you again, but I know that you eventually become one. Where, my dear fellow? Our carriage appears to have been arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruhudo? Yes, Mr. Sholmes. I've little doubt Mr. Natsume will be releasing time for dinner this evening. 
And so, with Soseki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. Shoms to what was to become our new home. 221B Baker Street! Oh my god! Are we gonna get a cutting? No, but we got a room. This is nice. So this... Is to be our new office, yes! Or office? I really like the sound of that. Me too! It's simply wonderful, isn't it? I hope you can see this, Kasuma. It's only a small step. But I like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream now. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Oh my god! That's how you look without your helmet? Ah, oh, Mr. Shoms, yes, thank you so much. It's a delightful room, Mr. Shoms, I simply adore it! Good, I'm pleased to hear it. Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. I hope everyone's hungry, it's nearly time for dinner! I will eat as soon as Mr. Natsume arrives, we have a lot to celebrate! Iris, you must let me help you. Alrighty then! Sassy, you can be in charge of the salad! Splendid! I haven't seen Iris in so long! So, Mr. Naruhudo, how does it feel? You have your own office in the capital! It's very exciting, actually! I can't help wondering what adventures await us! <laughs> Those were precisely my sentiments when I first established my office at these premises! Until I discovered the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry? London is a glorious place, full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightest of lights, as the darkness of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So, once again, Mr. Narujudo. That's elegant as heck. Welcome to London. It's not lying. Of course, at the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Shums so casually spoke. But it wasn't long before my turn came. To lift the facade and see the true depth of the murk that lay behind it. Is this the end? It is the end! I don't have a cutscene to end! Okay! That was a good hour of streaming! Landed in London, awarded. Okay, everybody! It was short, but I just wanted to finish this case already because I was so, so, so... excited. But now that we are here, Next time, we're getting the Hound of the Past, I mean, the Unspeakable Story. So, once again, thank you as always. I always have a lot of fun streaming this for you guys. I know that I never get a, a lot of uh, viewers, but every time that I get someone, it's already very fun to do. So, I'm gonna leave it at that. And until next time, bye everybody. I'm gonna leave something for you to listen while I finish my session. Bye!